Hello and welcome to the 12th Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games. I will be using Counter-Strike Global Offensive to complete this tutorial. Today we will be doing an introduction to inputs and outputs, also known as I.O. I.O. can be used to modify entities in your level in real time, have doors open and close, platforms move and slide, spawn things and delete things. It's one of the core functions of Portal 2 mapping, but can be used in all sorts of games. So today we're just going to go over a quick overview. I'm using the map from the doors tutorial here, and we're just going to use the doors as our guinea pigs for inputs and outputs. We're going to use the most basic function, which is a button. So I'm just going to grab a dev texture really quick. There should be a dev button. After I have my dev button, I'm just going to place it on this wall here using my brush tool, shift B to open the brush tool and then create the brush. So now with this button here, we're going to use this button to open this door. So to do this, we need to start by tying this function button to an entity. Press control T and it'll tie it to a func detail. We now want to change its object properties to be a function button. Click apply. And now there's a few options that we'll want to change here. These are the most common options that you use on a function button. The first one being delay before reset. This is how often the button can be pressed. By default, it's three, meaning this button has a reset of three seconds. When you press it, it can't be pressed again for another three seconds. So I'm just going to set this to one. And I'm not going to change anything else here. Under flags now, I'm going to choose don't move. By default, when you push a funk button or activate it, it depresses using the move direction value under class info. I don't want my button to move, so I'm going to use don't move. And we also have use, touch, and damage activates. These are your activation methods. If you'd like someone to shoot the button for it to activate, now we need to name our door. This is already a funk door, and I'm going to uncheck use opens here. If you don't know how to make a funk door, please watch the doors tutorial. It is tutorial 11 right before this one. On our entity now, we want to change name. We're just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it sliding underscore door and click apply. Now this entity has a name and we can fire inputs to it. So select our funk button and then click outputs. This is our outputs window for where we script all of our actions that we want this button to do. We're going to create a basic action to tell the door to open. So click add, and we'll now get this little line added that's a zero, zero, and no. We now have these options down here. My output's named. This is basically under what condition should this output be fired. Each object has different outputs. The funk button has on damaged, in, out, pressed, use locked, and user one through four. The one that we're going to use is on pressed. On pressed is what's fired when the button is pressed by using E or damaged when you're shot if you have the key flag on it. So I'm going to select on pressed. And now we need to choose entities named. This is what this output is going to affect. We can use the eyedropper and then just click on the door or you can use the drop down and select it from the list. Via this input, what this is, this is the action that that entity should take. Again, each entity has different actions that they can take when they're told. I'm going to use open. This will tell the door to open and thus slide down. I'm going to click apply and that's it. We're not going to use with a parameter override. This is for more advanced things. And the delay is going to stay as zero, zero. So we're going to click apply and then we're going to close out of this window. If you'd like to see what inputs and outputs an entity has, bring up its options and then click help. You'll get this entity help option. And then from here, you can scroll down to inputs. These are all the inputs that this entity can fire. We'll see we have color, alpha, here's open the door, or close the door, lock, unlock, and here are its outputs. You can also find all this information carbon copied on the VDC. So if you just press F1 when you're in Hammer, this will open up the VDC, and you can do a search for Funk Door. Whenever someone asks me a question about an entity, this is the first place that I go. So if you have a question about something, check this website out first, see if there's any bugs reported for your issue that you're having, and if you still can't figure it out, then shoot me an email. Now this door will open when we press E or shoot this button. But what if we want to do some other different activation methods, such as when you walk into an area, or when you leave an area? 
there's two other entities that we can use to do this called trigger once and trigger multiple. To use these entities, we need to use the trigger texture. So click browse and then do a search for trigger. Trigger is a volume based entity and we just need to put it around an area so that way when you enter it or exit it, depending on what we tell it to do, it will perform a task. I'm going to have this door automatically open for me when I enter the area and then automatically close when I leave it. To do this, I need to modify the door a little bit and I need to change delay before reset to negative one. It's already like that from the previous tutorial, but I do need to name it. I've named this entity location door since my location is going to determine its state. Now I'm going to create a volume brush in the area that I want to affect the door. So now, with this brush created, when I enter this volume, I'm going to have the door open, and when I leave the volume, the door will automatically close behind me. So I'm going to press Control T to tie it to an entity, and then change it to trigger multiple. Trigger multiple also has the delay before reset item, but you can usually keep this at one and you'll be fine. Again, it's just the reset before it can trigger again from its on start touch outputs. If you set it to negative one, it will only trigger once. In that case, you should use a different entity that we're going to go over next. Now under outputs, click add. My output's named on start touch. This means when you start touching this entity, it's going to fire an output. We're going to choose location door as our name and via this input is going to be open. Now the door will open when I enter this volume. I also need to tell it to close when I leave, so we're going to add another output. And then on end touch. We're now going to choose location door again, and we're going to tell it to close. You may have noticed that there's on end touch all. For on end touch all, the difference is, is on end touch fires when any entity inside of this volume leaves it, it will fire this. On end touch all means when there's nothing left inside of it to trigger it, it will fire this output. Now you may be wondering, can I have other things trigger a trigger multiple? Yes, you can. Under flags, we have clients, NPCs, physics objects. You just tick these flags depending on what you want to trigger this object. Click apply, and we'll close out of this. Now we're going to use a trigger once. What a trigger once does, it does exactly what its name is. It will only trigger once. So we're going to create the volume around this other door. And this door is going to be named once. Just keep it simple, stupid tie this to an entity and make it a trigger once. And once this trigger is created, go to outputs and click add. We'll use on start touch and on trigger. And you'll notice that these are really the only two outputs that this item has. On trigger is fired when this entity triggers by someone walking into it and on start touch is when someone walks into it. I usually use on start touch. We're gonna select the door and we're just going to tell it to open. We're gonna click apply and close out of that. And this door is going to automatically close after five seconds. Meaning when I walk into this volume, this door will open only one time and then it will close after five seconds. And then if I walk into the volume again, it will not open automatically. Whereas this other door will open and close when I enter or leave the volume. I'm going to go ahead and compile this level now and then we'll check it out in game. Once we're in game, I'm going to walk up to this button and push E on it, and the door opens. The door should close itself after a moment. There we go. And open it again, hit the button. When I walk into this volume, this door will open. After five seconds, it'll close. But it won't open again unless I press E on the door. Where this door over here is using the location when I enter and exit. So when I enter, the door opens, and when I leave, it closes automatically. Now there's some more advanced things that you can do with IO, and I'll let you figure it out. I'll slowly cover entities and what they can do in coming tutorials, but most of what you'll do is just play with entities and you'll figure out what they can do. If you'd like to do more inside of game with troubleshooting and messing with entities, you can use your console to use the ENT fire command. I'll show you guys that now. It's very useful for troubleshooting purposes. So just open your console and you need to turn on SVCheats1. 
Now that SV Cheats is on, we're going to fight, use anti fire. You type anti underscore fire and hit space, and it will automatically give you a population of the targets that are in your level. These are your named objects, such as location door. Now if I type in location door and then hit space, it's going to give me all of its inputs that it can take. So if I tell it to open, it's just fired that output straight to that entity so I can troubleshoot in-game or fire things to see what I want to do. This is useful for fog settings, um, HDR settings. I covered this briefly in the lighting tutorial for getting our HDR correct. There's other fun things you can do, such as special target names. There's activator, self, picker, and a few other things. If I look at this door here, this door doesn't have a name, but my picker or my aimer is on top of it. I open my console, do ENT underscore fire, and then exclamation mark picker. It will automatically know that I'm looking at that door, and then I can fire an output to it, such as open. And then if I look at it again, I can tell to close. And this is also great for troubleshooting purposes. You can also target things by an entire class name. Since all of these, well, since these two are prop doors, if I do ENT fire prop door open, prop door rotating, they automatically open since all of those doors are the same class. And if I do ENT fire funk door open, the sliding door over there open, and if I do funk door rotating open, the other door open. This is targeting the entire class, and you typically only do this if you're troubleshooting something, but it's another fun way to use ENT fire to kind of figure out what outputs you need to fire in your level. I hope this tutorial has helped you create basic IO in your level. There will be more IO to come. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.